What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel with something a little bit different today. We have got Alex coming over to do a collaboration. We're talking about different players going through the lines. Defenders and goalkeepers on his channel. Check that out. And of course, we're going to be looking at this one now, which is the midfielders with attackers to come as well. A full discussion in talking about the skills, the best players to put in, the best system to employ to get the best out of your gameplay experience and to get as many wins as possible and go up the rankings. So let's enjoy it and we'll talk to you in a bit. And let me know, this is something a little bit different. So let me know, I'm interested in feedback on this video and uh, I will talk to you in a bit. All right, boys, we are back. We're joined again by Alex. Now look, we're gonna be focusing on midfielders here. If you've arrived here and you're looking where defenders are, they are on Alex's channel. So I make sure and check him out. It's a really good video. We're talking about left backs, right backs and center backs. I think we threw in goalkeepers as well, Alex. Yep. Um, and we talk about builds, player skills, Alex has shown a couple of builds, given his insight into what works based on formations. We, me and Alex play different formations, different type of styles. So it kind of covers pretty much everything over on Alex's channel for the defenders and goalkeepers. Um, so make sure you check that out. Alex is back with us. We're going to be doing the midfielders next. So Alex, um, I think we'll just dive straight in and talk about who my favorite midfielder is. And it's the question I get asked the most about is Patrick Vieira. And is he the best player in the game? I would happen to say yes. Um, okay, okay. And I, think um, I will object to that and they say Rijkaard. <laughs> okay, instantly, Rijkaard, okay. instant, uh, yeah, instant, uh, Rijkaard and him kind of do similar jobs, don't they? Really, like they're both long, they both intercept a lot of balls. And that's kind of where the game is at at the moment, is if you can get the ball off your opponent quickly oh, yeah. and counterattack. I feel like, like if they both kind of do the same jobs, don't they? Rijkaard and Vieira. Yeah, I feel like you want to be extra secure in your midfield or you're like afraid that... Uh, your opponent is playing a lot of one-two passes down the middle. You need probably yeah. two pivot points like that. But I see from your formation currently, you also have two aggressive destroyers in Makalele and Vieira. So very, very protective right, right there. Mm. Yeah, well, I think if you're playing a double pivot, like most of the top rank players will usually play a double pivot or else they'll play one sitting really deep DMF, usually Rijkaard, usually Vieira, or else maybe sometimes Pirlo, somebody like that. Um... I get another question to ask the whole time. Who's better, Makalele or Vieira? Makalele or Reichardt? There, In my opinion, there's no real comparison to a tall, like long-legged kind of like Vieira over Makalele. Even though I think Makalele is probably better at winning the ball back off people, Vieira and Reichardt just block absolutely everything. You know what I mean? They're yeah, just in, so in my tall opinion, it so feels strong. like... Yeah, I feel like it's so, so template when you see these people in top 10 in divisions on any, mm. on any platform. They're using... Vieira, Rijkaard, uh, or sorry, Vieira and Kante. They're using Rijkaard and Makalele. Vieira and uh, Makalele. It feels like, are you supposed to be doing this because of, because why? And then the explanation <laughs> is very simple. Just because Vieira, he's pacey, he's good at intercepting, but Makalele is probably definitely faster. Vieira is going to be winning headers for you. Makalele is going to be complimenting he, this by covering up all the second balls and making sure that he's winning those after Vieira maybe wins the header. And also he's very agile, great balance on the ball, can carry the ball a little bit. Kante, especially short-term Kante, is fantastic at that. I can yep. attest to that. And uh, yeah, just like it, it, from a logical standpoint, it is nice to have a player who is tall, who's going to be winning this. But if you had, if Makalele was also 190 and um, uh, or two meters tall, it, just, it would be also like very nice to have two tall players. But he mm. wouldn't be as spacey as he is yeah. uh, with this build. So probably that's how real life works. Uh, tall yeah. players are not that spacey as uh, smaller players. But uh, like, uh, like you see, explosive. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, explosive. And that's, that's, that's what a big difference. Briefly yeah. cover the play styles. So currently you have a destroyer and box to box and you play Lombo counter. And I've heard that it is beneficial, especially when you're playing like one pivot point to have like an anchorman that his role is going to be covering the holes in the middle of your defense because he's going to mm -hmm. be dropping down. So in this regard, can you show us your Casemiro build then and uh, where in which play styles or in when exactly you're going to be playing a uh, anchorman over box to box player there? Casemiro, he's yeah. down as an anchorman, right? So I have him up on screen here. He's down as an anchorman. And the one difference you'll see when you're talking about anchormen or you're talking about destroyers is usually anchorman players have got lower speed and acceleration, but really high defensive stats. So if I was to bring this Casemiro in here, he's obviously going to get the manager boost and he's going to get his uh, upgrade there. He's going to have 80 speed, 
uh, but only 65 acceleration. But every single defense stats is going to be into the 90s. So 97 aggression, 93 tackling, 96 defensive engagement. And also on top of that as well, he does have blockers straight off the rip. So you don't need to train him. You don't need to do any skills. Is there any skills. preference? Like, for instance, you play Lombo Counter. Is it preferred to have an anchorman there? Like, maybe when you play possession, you want to have a destroyer in the midfield. Do you, do you have any um, tips for that? Yeah, well, I would probably use, like, if I'm going playing an anchorman here, I would probably, or because Reichardt is an anchorman and I'm lucky enough to have him, I would usually play an anchorman with a destroyer. Now, you can go creative as well. Like, I know one of your favorite players is Kamavinga. I know you like to use him. And he yeah. is a really good card for that center midfield role. Oh, yeah. Where he's got brilliant defensive stats, but he's down as an orchestrator. Do you know, he's this, this version of him here is down as an orchestrator, but he's got excellent defensive stats. So that's where it kind of comes into it with the double pivot. If you're looking to use a card, right? If you're looking to use a card that is going to... If you're looking to use a card to carry the ball, you need him to have pretty decent like on-ball skills where our stats. That's basically either passing really high or tight possession or balance really high or dribbling really high. So I think if you are... Me personally, I would always play um, a DMF. That's like a kind of a deep line anchorman. And then another DMF or another CMF beside him or just slightly above him as kind of like my all-rounder. So it's a box-to-box and destroyer and an anchorman secondary built into one. So his primary role would be to get around the pitch as quickly as possible. If people go back uh, to your, there's a current te- a, a, a recurrent team from your video when we talked about the CBs. That's okay. a very similar kind of system because you've got one passive CB and one aggressive CB. It's the same in midfield. One passive DMF that the ball is being let come to him and then the other one where the other player is going chasing the ball. In this instance, it would be Rijkaard letting the ball come to him stopping everything, disrupting everything, um, and blocking everything, and then Makalele or Kamavinga or Barella or whoever you want actually actively chasing the ball back. You know what I mean? Chasing the yeah, ball. So three is becoming back. a very difficult system to beat because you're going to be having so many players in the middle, you're going to be having a, a threat on the flanks with forwards, uh, with ranking forwards, land forwards, and then uh, fullbacks as well. And then mm-hmm. uh, Rijkaard, if you have a player like Rijkaard or Casemiro, are going to be dropping down and you're going to be defending with three at the back. And if you have a track back uh, on your Roberto Carlos or on Bissaka, um, and obviously Van Bissaka is a defensive fullback, but let's assume you have Cancelo there, and uh, you have maybe uh, special instructions for them to stay deeper, and uh, or maybe like one of them is going to be staying deeper. It's going to be a very difficult system to break down. So speaking yeah. of the next play style that is uh, more attack-minded, and that is box-to-box all whole player, and there are a lot of versions of Bellingham card with these play styles, and uh, he is actually very, very effective, and if especially his free card that was given as a nominating contract, um, like, I feel like months ago or something. Mm. Yeah, well, the, like, my, I'd say my best, my favorite box-to-box in the game is probably Barella. That's the kind okay. of, yeah, or else Bellingham. Nice Bellingham and Barella are two, I would say, are two of the best kind of players in the game. That Bellingham, that free Bellingham, is insane like you can train him in any dif- any way you want do you know what i mean you can train him yeah. as a dmf you can train him as a cmf you can train him as anything but it's similar to a cmf uh, similar to destroyer isn't it like that you're going to be using him in a situation to be able to do everything carry the ball forward the only thing you're not really doing with a cmf is shooting inside the box passing dribbling defending slide tackling winning aerial battles you're doing yeah, all you see, of that. That's that's actually there is a catch. I feel like uh, since yeah, indeed uh, he's gonna be like a, acting like a destroyer because he has such mm. high um, speed uh, and acceleration numbers. But since he's a box to box, I felt noticed how both on console and mobile, these box to box players are actually uh, running a lot in the opponent's box, and you really want a little bit of uh, finishing. So I feel like if you give like one or two points to his finishing, I'm talking about the build for the animation contact card. He's gonna be getting like seventy five. And that is actually very, very nice. And his whole player, you can't really train that. Most of his whole players are um, player of the week cards. I have mm. actually his whole player player of the week card. It has like 80 something, 82 finishing or something, right? 84 mm. maybe with the yeah, manager yeah. boost. Yeah, it he's, is very his, nice. His card he's, is ridiculous. Like his card is very insane. nice. And it feels like when you're looking at the card, there's like not a single, not a lot of stats that are in blue, right? But it is because it is so balanced. The stats are mm. evenly distributed. He can defend. He is pacey, he can dribble a little bit, he has a special double touch, and then he can finish as well. So, like in real life, he is a very, very unique player, and uh, 
indeed uh, this game is uh, doing him justice i feel like uh, any yeah. card box to box be it box to box or whole player yeah well any card that you're going to have is a box box like to be honest with you man like it doesn't you don't even need to like i feel a lot of people overcomplicate stuff you know what i mean and like i don't say that in a in a way that's like you know um it trivializes like what people do and don't know about the game or even people that are just playing this game very casually like at the end of the day if you've got an attacking player you should be attacking with him if you have a defensive player you should be defending with him and if he's not doing that job for you he's either a bad fit for you you have a bad build on him or else you have a bad formation slash tactic that's not working for you it's like playing a left midfielder such as like we have demarco here right so if we were talking about bellingham as a box to box or you're talking about pushing Bellingham in a little bit more advanced so that he's covering more ground. He needs high stamina, but he's also going to be able to do it all, as you mentioned. Then you bring in attacking midfielders, right? And we have this Honus guy that we got from the Rummy Pack. This guy is all about just kind of linking the play. Do you know? So I feel like with the midfielders, your main two positions are your stopper, which is your DMF, and your attacking midfielder. One is stopping everything going back to your defenders and linking your defenders. And the other is starting everything going forward from midfield and linking your strikers. So, yeah, I see that a lot, that people overcomplicate things where it's like, oh, I'm playing three AMFs or two AMFs. And it's like, yeah, perfect, that'll work for you. But at the same time, you've no wit. So if somebody's able to stop you going through the middle, you are kind of have to change. You have to go to plan B. Instead of having plan A incorporate a lot of different tactics with the players that are good at doing what they're doing, such as Bellingham at CMF, box to box, or pushing them a bit forward if you don't have a better AMF. Do you get me? Yeah, there's also one tricky uh, stat that I also found um, difficult to, to attribute to um, my players, especially box to box type of players, and especially attacking midfielders. This is passing. So I feel mm. like there's like a, for me, the standard, uh, like it would be preferred to have 85 plus passing, low pass, yep. especially. I don't really mind uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, the stat for the lofted passes for midfielders, uh, but a low pass 85. And uh, it, I, I usually give it to my box to box defenders who are not supposed to be like, uh, spamming uh, Pirlesque uh, uh, through balls into the striker and uh, leading to 1-1 um, situations. In general, I feel like 85 is good for me. Uh, what about mm -hmm. you? No, I'm the same. I'm the same. But to be honest, the passing I think is so busted at the moment that like hopefully by the time the next update comes that they've actually fixed the passing, that there's a discrepancy between 80 passing and 90 passing. Because at the moment, oh, right. every yeah. player can pass. Every player can shoot. Every player can win the ball back. Like Messi can defend the ball and intercept a ball off the era yeah. if you have the animation there and it sets off. It's the same yeah. with passing. Passing's all about angles. You know, we could do a complete different video on passing angles and how yeah. the top players are able to retain possession. It's it's not complicated. It's just very, it's very kind of like streamlined passing angles. That's what they do. They cut the angle before they pass rather than just what the average player will do. They'll just pass the ball into the, where the, the, the player should be. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's the same, man. Like, just to kind of go through the passing there, as you said, uh, player skills, I think, are equally as important as stats, if oh, yeah, not more sure. so. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. if you stick low lofted pass, if you stick weighted pass, if you stick true passing, any of and those... And just for the reference, like, uh, through passing is... Uh, improving your technique for through pass. Every player mm -hmm. can perform a vantage pass or a through pass, but adding <laughs> the vantage pass skill is making them more consistent with the mm. first time pass. And adding through passing is like, it could be like such a negligible distance for a through pass, but Casemiro was selling me so much that I decided to give him through passing skill. And now mm -hmm. he's even like when he's not playing like a long pass, but if he's playing a short pass and I really want it to be a through pass, Casemiro now with that through passing skill is performing that... Uh, um, more consistently and uh, with better precision. And same goes, uh, like additional skill would be the weighted pass, very underrated. So I feel like if you have a premium card, like boosted card, and everyone, oh no, this KDB, like boosted KDB card is so good at passing, or Pirlo is so good at passing, and you, I didn't get that, oh, it's a, such a shame. You can just maybe take your Bellingham, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, like if you can, of course, and attribute him uh, necessary passing. So he's, so he's lacking through passing, right? Give him surpassing. He's lacking weighted pass, maybe. Give him weighted pass. And you'll mm -hmm. see that your Bellingham, like the animations will improve then. 
Yeah, because the animations drive this game like a lot across mobile. Yeah, just and to kind of just to kind of round this midfielder's video up, right? Because we yeah, covered let's, DMX. Let's wrap it up with uh, yeah, attacking midfielders. Yes, yes. That's yeah, right. yeah abundance we've got, of attacking midfielders in the game that you can use. Any player essentially that has got like a ta- uh, passing skills and dribbling skills as close to ninety as possible. That's all you really need with attacking. I kind of look at attacking midfielders as like it's like an extra center forward that can pass the ball without shooting. That's what it's like. It's like a center forward without shooting. So the ba- Baggio is a fantastic attacking midfielder at the moment, even though he's down as a different type of card in the game. Um, like, you know, any of those cards, Ribery, Neymar, Musiala, any of those cards can be used in an attacking midfielder position. I know Baggio is down here as an AMF, but Baggio was more kind of like a, you know, he was like an SS in real life. Yeah, but, but he's fantastic at finishing too. Is you, ridiculous, like. Even if ridiculous. you don't attribute any shooting skills, shooting stats on him, he can finish the chances. I feel like his base mm. finishing is like 80, so you, yeah. you already get it's a ridiculous. fantastic finisher. And you just like add a few points, so you get to 85. I feel like 85 is also like more than enough to score goals. And, oh, definitely, uh, man, yeah. Then regarding the, even is good enough, I think. A lot yeah, we'll, we'll cover that in the attacking attacker videos. I feel like, but yeah, when yeah, it yeah. comes down to pace acceleration, uh, well, you would want usually probably to reach at least 90 uh, 19 balance, and you achieve that yeah. by improving dexterity uh, mm-hmm. stats uh, for which is like a triad of stats, right? It's going to be improving attack and awareness. It's going to be improving your acceleration and balance. And uh, what kind of uh, threshold do you want to reach uh, with that for attacking midfielders? What is your numbers? Well, like for for me, if I'm training, if you look at any of the players, like, right, I think a good base is if you look at any of the player of the weeks, usually the player of the weeks that they give that are attacking midfielders are like the likes of Pedri or any of those guys that can play in that attacking midfielder role. They usually have 90 acceleration, 90 i i like to go for any of my attacking players we'll cover this in the attacking uh video that we're going to be doing as well right i like to give my attacking players what i mean by attacking players is any player i am literally going to be passing the ball with and not passing away from unless i'm either shooting or i'm trying to get an assist so wingers amf and center forwards they're my four main end end like they're the end of the chain they're the end of the line as in like if i get a ball with an attacking midfielder and i'm able to shoot I want to be able to finish with a player like Baggio or I want to finish with a player like Musiala. If I'm using a creative playmaker in attacking midfield, it's kind of similar to using a left midfielder or a right midfielder to cross balls in. They're kind of running with the ball and then delivering the ball. They're not trying to f- finish too much. If I'm looking to finish, I'll play a, a strike a striker, basically. That's a playing attacking midfielder, if that makes sense. So for the likes of attacking midfielders, I would always try and have low pass, tight possession, balance, and acceleration at the 90. Because that means you have the passing, but you also have the run and gun, which works in the game as the meta. So you can kind of switch it up against people. Whereas if somebody sees you playing, you know, uh, Bellingham in midfield as an attacking midfielder, they kind of know what you're going to be doing because he's kind of a more complete box-to-box kind of creative rather than just kind of a small Iniesta-type player. Do you know, I prefer to play with Iniesta-type players, you know? So... Yeah, that's kind of where I would go with, with the attacking midfielders. Like, and then they're kind of the three main positions. I think DMF, as we covered, uh, AMF is is a massive decision to make in your squad if you're playing either three up front or two up front. And then for the left and right midfielders, I usually play either a Roman flank or a crosser, like a cross specialist. They're up on screen there. They're very simple. I'm not even going to spend any time because nobody crosses in this game. I'm probably the only one that crosses into King Collar in the box. Nobody crosses in this game. Crosses don't really work. It's probably like a 2 out of 10 chance you score a cross with the head in the way it is. And then your right midfielder then is somebody like Salah or somebody like that. Anybody that's able to get back and help on defense but still able to score if you manually drag them forward. Um... So yeah, man, that's that's kind of the midfielders. That's kind of the midfielders, you know, yeah, because I'm, I do I'm, feel like that it's, I think the attackers is where the real kind of like, like kind of like advanced stuff kind of comes in. Like midfielders is very simple. If you're playing a three midfield, a three man midfield, you kind of know what you're trying to do because the ball is so interception heavy. This game is so interception heavy. It's all about actually bypassing midfield and getting the ball past midfield. When you have the ball, um it's about getting the ball up to your strikers when you don't have the ball it's about getting the ball back in midfield that you don't need to defend with your defenders and that's kind of you know something that we've kind of covered now in the two videos the first one was on yours where you talked about defenders 
I think that's midfielders pretty much covered. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's going to be links for attackers, which is a video that is going yeah, to be released. And by the time you're watching this, I'll have, video, a, link, I'll have a link as well, Alex. Uh, obviously, yeah. lads, for you watching this, we have the link in the description. Check out Alex's video as well. We go into a lot of detail. Everything is covered in the defenders. Everything's now covered in the in the midfielders as well. Um, and the next one is going to be the attackers. So, yeah, man, that's it. Yeah, Thanks yeah. again, Alex. Appreciate nice that, man. It's been a good conversation. Yeah, the pleasure was all mine. And uh, see you in the next video. And we will see uh, you in the attackers. Yeah. Peace.